Okay, so uh, we're going to do a little bit of work here on 4, 3, which is the research analysis and testing portion of our roof project or roof section. And it says here that eQuest, that's a, that's a program from the Department of Energy, and it's a very good estimating tool um, for figuring out how much energy a building is going to use. It's, it's really, really quite accurate if you describe your building accurately within it. So it's a very, very good tool. But what we like to use it for is to uh, compare different design options to see what the effect is. So as an example for a roof, which has a lot of, lot of uh, uh, input as to what the what the total energy is going to be used in a building. Uh, we want to just see about some claims as to maybe how much effort do we put into the roof and the energy efficiency of the roof uh, for a design. And so I've got some data for you and you're going to access that data. I'm going to show it to you right now. And in your portfolio, you're going to show the data and, um, and, and put it in here. And then you're going to write a conclusion. And that means you're going to have to analyze the data. When you analyze the data, you look at it part by part by part to see the relations of how changes affect the outcome. Right? So you're going to be looking at the data and looking to see what changes between each piece of data and you're going to see if it makes a big difference or not. And then you're going to relate that into a conclusion about roofs or about the data or about uh, energy use. It's a, kind of up to you. It's sort of like it often when you do an analysis, you're you have a statement already that you're working on, but now I want you to work backwards a little bit, look at the data, and try to make sense of it, okay? So, let's take a look at the data and talk about it for a moment. Here's the data. This comes from eQuest. Each one of these lines that you see here, you know what, I'm going to put this into a Jamboard because I think it'll be easier for me to to work with. So there we go. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it right into a Jamboard. Because then I can point at things and I can do stuff. Okay, so now I have some data, and you'll see that there's something called a baseline, and that's just your starting point. That's what it is. It's what everything gets measured against, and it's wood roof with advanced frame stud, okay? And so uh, we're going to take a look at that and, uh, and see what happens here. So I've got an advanced frame stud roof system. And uh, based on whatever the size of this building is, I don't really know. It says I'm going to use 19,000 kilowatt hours of energy, which will be about $3,800 for the year. Okay, and then if I want to figure out how much I'm going to cost compared to my baseline, of course, it doesn't make any sense. NA means not applicable because it is my baseline. Now, I'm going to change something. I'm going to do something that many people talk about. It's very good. We're going to change the color of the roof. We're going to do light uh, adiabatic roof. Okay, um, so a 0.4 coloring that's pretty low it runs from zero to one so a light roof is supposed to use less energy and so we've taken our baseline which has probably composite shingles or some sort and i've made it lighter and that saved me over the year 
twelve dollars. Twelve dollars, or one third of one percent. So that doesn't look like a big savings. So now we all know that if we put uh, more insulation on, that helps. So here we've made one more change. We've kept our light coloring, and I've put on R14 exterior insulation. So this means that on top of the rafters, or uh, I've I've laid uh, insulation down. Okay, and that saved. The two of those together saves $32 compared to my standard. Well, now we're starting to get some stuff. Of course, that's for a year. So I'm going to save $32 per year by going with some special thing here and something, something here. Well, okay. So now I'm going to add even more. Plus 30 even more. And that made absolutely no difference. So now you'll need to know that this is for a particular building in a particular location. I'll let you know that this particular location is in a spot that has wonderful weather. So you can imagine that having tons of extra insulation won't really help you very much because... The weather fluctuations aren't driving a big deal here. You could do this very same analysis in a much colder or a much hotter environment and get wildly different numbers. That's really important for you to know. Okay, so now what I've done is I've, I've, I've come down off of this because I found out also that that's not allowed. It's too much according to Cal Green. You're actually not allowed to put that much on. You're only allowed to put on an additional 21. So what I did is I put a radiation barrier on there. People talk about radiation barriers all the time. What that is is a thin metallic film that uh, makes the energy uh, reflect in one direction but not the other. And so I still haven't saved any more with all of that extra work. So these are things that people will often tell you. Uh, you need this, you need this, you need this, you need this. And uh, this data is going to tell me something about that statement. And that only applies to this data. It does not apply to every building in the world. It does not apply to every building that you might design. It applies to this building. Uh, but then the architect says, well, I'm going to do one more thing because I've got to get an energy savings uh, over 15% for Cal Green. So how is the, the architect going to try to do that? Well, the architect is kind of figuring out that all of these things aren't helping out. But one thing he knows or she knows that does really help out is just making a smaller building. So they took a 20% area reduction in the building pad size. So this building in number six is 80% of the size of the building that it was here. Now it's still got all these things. It's still got this and it's still got this and it's still got this. But we've added on a 20% reduction in size. And, oh, lo and behold, look at that. I got almost a 20% reduction in energy use. So it can't all be roof. There must be something else going on. Okay, so you can see, though, that the way that this data is organized, I keep doing one more thing at a time so that I can see the effect of each new thing that I do. And so now there's a lot of conclusions that you can draw. You can look at these numbers and tell me uh, what makes the largest effect and what makes the smallest effect. On this building, um, you can 
uh, look at these numbers as they go, and you can look and see if the savings might be worth the cost of doing it. You have to do a little bit more research to do that. You have to find out the cost of doing this. But I would bet, uh, you know, over 10 years, $320, I would bet that doing that might cost $320. So, um, kind of up to you to think about. But then you can also draw other conclusions from this. So, your job is to look at this and look at it deeply and look at maybe costs or maybe kilowatt hours or maybe percent savings. You can look at any one of these columns and draw conclusions from the data. So that's what your job is. Now, the way you would do that, uh, you, you would write a little conclusion that would say something like, let me, from the data I see, something number one. So you're going to see, you're going to see some data and I also see something. From those two observations, I believe that some conclusion follows. So this is just the most basic logic system that you can have. Okay, so that's going to be the start. From the data, I see something, and I also see something. And from those two observations, so you have to bring things together in a new way. And that's going to be up to you to do. Okay, I, it, it doesn't doesn't, I don't think, teach you anything just to listen to me give you a conclusion and you write it down. I don't, I don't think that helps you learn how to draw a conclusion. Okay, but I'm, I'm pointing at how you will do it. You'll make note of something that you see in the data and you'll make note of something else and those two things should be related somehow to drive you to a conclusion that seems pretty obvious from those two things. Okay, so there we go. That's how you draw a conclusion.